you know, I usually know within about five minutes of finishing reading up a story whether or not it is worth covering. Today's story is quite the exception to this rule of thumb. Good day, mates and fellow adventurers. My name is Mordecai. Something important to bear in mind whilst at the table that we don't normally consider is the health and safety of those at said table. Sure, there is a lot less risk when one is merely rolling dice, be it in person or over the internet, when compared to hitting the gym or attending a live action role-playing session, but we still need to make sure that the environment is as safe as possible. Suffice to say, today's story very much involves a rather sensitive situation. So much so that I have to give a disclaimer. If a person's life is in danger, do not wait until it's too late. Contact emergency services. Yeah, with a disclaimer like that, you know that this isn't exactly a normal story we're covering today. Let's delve into the often terrifying world of r slash RPG horror stories. Today's narrative is titled, That Guy Insists He Just Fell Out of His Chair, and is written by a user who has, since posting the story, deleted this post, deleted all of his comments on the post, and has seemingly vanished. Feel free to take a guess as to why, as we delve through the story. So this is a horror story I happen to be a part of, even though I wasn't playing in the game, or playing tabletop role-playing games at all. The game in question was Dungeons and Dragons, because of course it was, and it was a large group of like 9 or 10 players. They were all middle-aged, looked to be about early 30s up to mid 50s, so not a bunch of kids. I do not know that much more about the group. I also don't know for sure if the player in question is a that guy since I never paid much attention to this game, but in my opinion, he did act like one. So anyways, I would frequent my local game store for board game night, which was the one night a week that was designated for adult board gaming. I believe there was a separate afternoon that was for homeschooled children. A lot of board gamers would show up weekly for this event, and the play area was small. Also, there were frequently Magic the Gathering tournaments and events scheduled on board game night, and they got first dibs on the space, since Magic the Gathering accounted for a majority of the store's profits. If magic were happening, we were often crammed into a small space. The tables in the place were also a bit too small for board game. A normal sized board game didn't really fit on each of the tables, and we just had to make do. That was except for one table, which was very long and very wide. You could make a reservation for the big table. We usually didn't, and preferred to leave it to open, so whoever needed a big table for a game could use it. If we had a large group of players who wanted to play something special that absolutely needed a bigger table, occasionally it would be planned ahead and the table would get reserved for the night. And usually games that size would take the entire night to play. That is, until a large D&D group decided they wanted to play at the game shop on board game night and talk to the staff to reserve the nice table in perpetuity forever for their campaign. From then on, every board game night, they had the table reserved. Technically, they followed the rules, but come on, this was a jerk move. I don't think I should have to explain why. Also, they were really territorial about their reservation. Sometimes, they'd show up as a group hours late to the reservation, and then make staff kick people off the table who had been playing on it because they reserved it. Sometimes, they decided to play light board games instead of D&D, but they still got the table, even though the games they played were on the smaller side and could easily fit on the other tables. Incidentally, that table was big enough to easily accommodate three normal-sized board games, but they had a one-game-per-table rule of some description. When they would decide to play board games, they would split up into two or three groups. One would take the big table, and the others would take an entire small table each. 
And like I said earlier, we were often cramped for space because of Magic the Gathering events. They were also for some reason excluded from the rule where if you wanted to play in the store, you had to be inclusive and openly welcome anyone else at the store that wanted to play. Another kind of inclusivity may not work for an RPG campaign, but they were also insular and refused to play with anyone else when they played board games. It wasn't a problem with our group either. There were several Magic the Gathering players that would show up every week hoping for an event, and if there wasn't one, they would just play board games with the board gaming people. The owner and staff would often bring people over and introduce them to us because they wanted to try board games and we would adjust our games to fit them in. I have, and sometimes still do, play tabletop role-playing games, which is why I'm in this group, and I've even played Dungeons & Dragons before, but don't anymore. Quite a few of the people in the board gaming group were into D&D, and several had ongoing weekly games, so this isn't just hazy of people who play a different thing, those people were all just jerks. For the most part though, outside of their table tantrums, we didn't interact much. They were a pretty insular group. One night, which was actually a pretty quiet night with no magic, we were all happily playing our tabletop games, whatever they were, when suddenly one of the D&D players falls out of their chair and starts having a seizure. His friends at the table just sat there, staring as the rest of us jumped up and started moving furniture around. It was a cramped space to give him room so he didn't hurt himself. He seized for several minutes, so it was definitely serious. Then he came out of it. He saw all of us standing around him, except his friends who hadn't even bothered to get out of their seats, and we helped him up. He said, oh, sorry, I must have fallen out of my chair. We told him he didn't fall out of his chair. He had a seizure. He insisted he didn't. We asked him if he had epilepsy. He said no. We told him he needed to see a doctor. We had a nurse with us who was trying to talk to him and convince him to see a doctor. He insisted he only fell out of his chair and didn't have a seizure. Everyone in the store had just watched him convulse on the ground for several minutes. He argued with all of us for 15 minutes that he had only just fallen out of his chair. Maybe he was a bit out of it. That's understandable considering. I'm not exactly sure what his relationship with his D&D group was, but they had been playing together every week for over a year now. Not one of them spoke up to say that he didn't fall out of the chair and maybe he should see a doctor. They just sat there silently, like it wasn't for certain he was seizing and maybe he did just fall out of the chair. After those 15 minutes, we gave up and got to work putting the tables back as him and his friends continued on with their weekly game like nothing happened. Maybe getting their weekly D&D fix in was more important than making sure one of their players was alright. Seems like they were okay treating each other the same way they treated everyone else. Maybe it was an entire table of that guys, and this is the game they all end up in together once they've been kicked from every other game. And that's where the story ends. Yeah, there are several reasons why the author of the post has since deleted his entire account. We have a story that, if true, depicts not only a game store hosting possibly official tournaments for a major intellectual property, having their staff members fail to call an ambulance, but we also have everyone else playing at their particular game in the room act completely ignorant and uncaring towards a person who has unknowingly experienced a seizure. I get that the person who experienced the seizure wasn't exactly on good terms with OP, 
and I get that the whole group wasn't exactly popular with everyone else in the store either, but even I wouldn't wish Pete of all people to be in a position where their life is potentially in danger and no one bothered to help them by calling an ambulance to at least establish that they are no longer in danger. This actually brings up another point about this story, which may not be immediately obvious, but may have influenced the deletion of the story, and that is, I am 95% confident that this story is fake. Oh my god. Let's take a look back at some of the slides quickly. I mean, sure, I don't think I should have to explain why, is not exactly a sentence that inspires confidence in the poster's goodwill. You either explain what you mean, or you leave a sentence like that out. Because, in addition to everything else in the general vibe of the story, it gives off condescending vibes. By itself, being condescending towards others isn't necessarily an indication of a story being fake, but let's keep going. Another example is how we have everyone in the story acting kind of like automatons instead of actual people, with events flowing more like clockwork. Which, at first, seems like a completely logical sequence of events. Until you think about what was happening, and realise that it actually doesn't make sense at all. Like, the story is more written like a description of events from the perspective of someone watching a play on a stage rather than being in this situation, with everyone following a script to the letter which somehow didn't involve an ambulance being called by a bystander whilst the guy was having their seizure but did have everyone, including a trained nurse, do nothing after moving the tables except stare at them whilst they were having said seizure. You could argue that this may have been because everyone on site was in shock that this was happening, but somehow I doubt that was the case. Not even the staff members of the store who were presumably monitoring the room attempted to call an ambulance for the guy having a seizure. To add to this, you may have noticed that the D&D group is continually portrayed as a group of uncaring jerks, to the point of being completely uninvolved with the actual incident. The chances of running into an entire store of people that would act as the people portrayed in this story are astronomically low. You'd be more likely to have a proven cheating speedrunner for a video game immediately confessed to having faked all of their runs at the drop of the first piece of evidence. And we can't forget that the post has since been deleted from the subreddit in addition to the poster also vanishing from reddit altogether as far as I can tell. Which is a pretty clear indication that the story has a high likelihood of being fake when considering the other factors. So you might be wondering at this point why I decided to cover a fake story that has since been deleted off the subreddit. The short version is that my philosophy is that regardless of whether a story is real or fake, regardless of whether the story is controversial in nature or stays completely amicable, every RPG horror story has potential lessons and considerations for the table. And in the case of this story, the main takeaway is that if someone at a public venue is having a seizure, that action should be taken to make sure they don't hurt themselves, whilst also getting an ambulance to arrive on site in order to make sure that they are going to be okay long term. And this even benefits from being in a more private venue, like a home for example. This brings us back to an important topic. We've had quite a few RPG horror stories recently, which have been more on the controversial side. You know, cheating with blank notes and character sheets, system switching to nerf player characters, and now a fake story. I think I will need a slight detox before venturing into the controversial side of the RPG horror stories. My next video is going to cover a story which- Mordecai! Pete, why are you holding an entire door? You forgot that I told you that I would remove the door to your room if you use one of those video clips. Enjoy your door! You have got to be kidding me. That's going to take a long time to fix. <sighs> I'd better get started on fixing this door of mine. 
And that's about it. Thank you for watching my last video for 2022, and may you have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I will see you all next time.